anyway, so let's talk about, we're going to show this. It's, it's only two minutes long. I'm only going to show the first 30 seconds and then I'll pause it and go through, I'll kind of walk through. I'm also going to introduce tonight the concept of fertilizer formulations, which may, many of you probably are very familiar with. Um, but to, to, uh, you, to make the best use or the most efficient product and the most efficient fertility program for your turf grass, there needs to be some fundamental understanding of fertilizer formulations. And I'm going to go into that. There'll be probably several episodes where I go into it, like basic fertilizer formulations or the fundamentals of fertilizer formulation. And then I'm going to go into it in great depth, which I do about every year or two at the golf industry show. I go into, I think it's a four hour workshop on nothing but fertilizer formulations and how to fer formulate the most efficient fertilizer. I'm going to do that on my channel. It'll be some time before I do that. But today I'm going to introduce that topic a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to use this video to do it. Let's listen up. All right, y'all. So today we're going to answer some questions that we've gotten around our double dark fertilizer. And I'm going to give you some different ways that can use it. So we've talked about this before. It's a 1600, 16% nitrogen, but it's got 6% iron. And that's really the key here. Okay. So this fertilizer is 1600. The, and he's showing the tag here, the guaranteed analysis. And below the guaranteed analysis, you're going to see the derived from statement. And you can look up the, the Florida fertilizer label. I think actually I, I authored that in Florida. You can, if you Google Florida fertilizer label, it'll probably pop up. And I think my name's on that. I can't remember now, but anyway, it outlines the, the components of a fertilizer label. And in here, you can not always, but many times you can reformulate what's in the bag. And why is that important? Because once we, once we go through the next several months, maybe a year, I don't know. And we talk about all the elements there's going to be some fundamental knowledge or understanding of what should be going into the blend or what, what's the likelihood of seeing a turf response to things that are in the blend. So what's the likelihood of seeing a turf response to potassium and whether or not you choose to spend your money on that will be up to you, but then at least you'll know the risk and the likelihood of seeing a response to it. And same thing with iron or same thing with manganese, but then we have to figure out how to formulate it, how to, how to formulate the fertilizer. And, and, and when you look at these labels, you can reformulate it. And when you reformulate this fertilizer, you're going to see that it's an incredibly wasteful product. Okay. How do I know that? Well, one, I've formulated fertilizers for ages and ages manually, <laughs> but when you, you can, I want to teach you how to do it as well. If you don't already know on this, you're going to see 16% nitrogen, and then you're going to see iron, manganese, and zinc. And then you're down here, you're going to see derived from. Now, in or, the majority of what's in here is nitrogen, 1600, and the majority of the raw materials in here are going to be nitrogen raw materials. So let's start with that. If we look at the polymer coated urea on here at the bottom, it says derived from polymer coated urea, and then it says ferrous sulfate, and then it says urea, and then biosolids, which is a big black box. I don't know exactly which one they used, but um, it says urea, and then ammonium sulfate. So we have. I'm going to say three iron and three nitrogen sources, but really four because biosolids is going to have some nitrogen in it too, but I'm going to sort of stash that aside for now. How do we know how much of the, those raw materials are in the fertilizer? What we would first want to do is look down here below the drive from, it's going to have the percent control release nitrogen. It's going to say from polymer coated urea is eight point, let's say 8.5%. This can slightly change based upon the manufacturer's tolerance of fines, meaning penalties. So if they say 8.5%, it might actually be 9%, but they're going to lower it. Each man, each distributor has an ability to lower it because if they say it's 8.5 and it comes back at a certain percentage below that, they're going to get fined. So they'll, let's say the, let's say it's a hundred percent sulfur coated urea and, and down here, it'll say, let's say it's a 4300 and down here, they're not, it's not going to say 43% controlled from sulfur coated urea because if they test it and it comes back as 40% rather than 43% because of some, you know, happenstance, then they're going to get fined for it. So they'll arbitrarily lower the percentage down to reduce the chances of being penalized. So I don't know exactly if it's 8.5% from polymer coated urea, it's probably 9% and they just lowered it down slightly. So let's say it's 9%, 9% of the 16 is from polymer coated urea. Th that's how we start the reformulation process. 9% is from sulfur coated or polymer coated urea. 
When you look up here under the total nitrogen, 13.9% is from urea. So between polymer coated urea and urea, let's say 14%, 14 units of the 16 units is from urea and polymer coated urea. And the remaining nitrogen either comes from ammonium sulfate or from biosolids. Okay. It's a long convoluted way of saying you can reformulate this if you have the knowledge. And I, I've done this. I have a little cheat sheet calculator that I use to reformulate these things. And what that tells me is that roughly speaking, this fertilizer is probably around 1100 to maybe as much as 1200 pounds of plant food and 800 pounds of filler. So in this fertilizer, you're doing, let me get a calculator. Hang on. In this fertilizer, you have, um, you're going to buy a ton and you're going to buy, so you're going to buy 40, 50 pound bags, 16 of those 40 bags are nothing but wasteful filler that provide no agronomic value to you. That's my estimation based upon my, my best reformulation estimation. Okay. You probably don't know that, or maybe you do because you are not required to put filler on the bag. It's not, it's not a legal, that's not a legal requirement. I wish it was because then the consumer would realize how much waste is in this fertilizer. That's unnecessary. This, the same amount of plant food can be reformulated such that you can eliminate those 16 wasteful bags that you're paying 25 or $30 a bag for for no reason, <laughs> there's not, they're not providing you any value at all. You might not have known it, but now you know it. If you know how to reformulate this, there's 16, let's call them 20 pound, $20 bags that are n doing you no good, zero. So you just wasted whatever the money that is. You just wasted $320 for every ton because you're buying a fertilizer that contains a tremendous amount of filler and you didn't know it because you didn't have the knowledge to know how to reformulate this properly. Okay. We're going to get into the zinc and the manganese and all this other stuff, but just knowing how to formulate and reformulate can save yourself a ton of money if you know how to do it. Okay. And we'll, we'll go into that, but I wanted to make that clear here is that the 1600 really, if it was reformulated correctly to have no filler in it, it would be like a, probably like a, well, I don't know, probably like a 2500 or 2800 or whatever. And then you wouldn't, you wouldn't buy as many tons instead of buying two tons, you'd buy 11 or 12 tons, or I'm sorry, instead of buying 20 tons, you'd buy 11 or 12 tons or whatever. You see my point, you've removed all that junk and now you're dealing just with rum plant food alone. And then you just lower your spread rate down from 300 pounds per acre to 150 pounds per acre or whatever. And you're good to go. Okay. So we'll get into that. That's what I'm hoping to, to eventually get to, to the point where you all can are able to do that on your own if you can't already. Okay. So we're going to talk about, he talked about iron, 16% nitrogen and 6% iron. Now we talked about yesterday, this 6% here is, is irrelevant. It's in, in things doesn't make any difference. This 6% is useless to me. What is useful is this soluble and chelated iron, really the chelated iron. So we're going to say 0.5%. And I, I talked to you yesterday about the 0.5% chelated iron in this fertilizer. If you applied it 300 pounds or applied it a hundred or one pound of nitrogen per thousand, you end up putting about one pound of chelated iron out per acre. And the article from yesterday also had a rate in there of one pound per acre of chelated iron. And I showed yesterday exactly um, what was likely to happen. And he's saying that, let me rewind, he's saying that applying this with nitrogen is gonna get you double dark green, okay? That's nonsense. Let's play it again. This before it's a 1600, 16% nitrogen, but it's got 6% iron. And that's really the key here is we have high iron and we also have a little bit of nitrogen to pull the iron in to turn the lawn nice and double dark green. Yeah, see, that's a claim that is easy to oversight see guys. And I, and I don't, I don't want to pretend as if I've never done it myself. I've done it myself. I'm guilty of just saying, ah, it's in one ear out the other. He's harmless. He's just selling fertilizer, whatever that's. I don't think that's in our best interests because then the next time something really important happens, you'll say you'll, he might, you might have the same approach and you get taken advantage. You're getting taken advantage of in this case, probably if you're buying this and you're not aware, if you're aware of it and you buy it, then so be it. No problem. But if you're not aware of it and you're buying it, then you're being taken advantage of. 
And so what happens the next time when someone offers you bugs in a jug or whatever, and you use the same process of buying it, the same critical thinking process of buying it, you don't, crit you don't critically think your way through it and you get taken advantage of. Okay. So that's, that's the, the, really the foundation of the issue is critically thinking, working your way through. Now he's made a claim, nitrogen and iron is going to suck up the iron into the, into the tar plant and make it double dark green. Please, you know, I know it, I don't know, it might be wishful thinking, but please don't let these little claims like this slide by because little nonsense claims lead and they, they keep hearing them over and over and over and over. And eventually they, they become, you know, you begin to become convinced that it's true. Okay. It's not true. There, there's no evidence to indicate that this is true. And in fact, there's clear evidence to indicate that it's not true, but let's look and see what I'm talking about. So if we go back to yesterday's paper, which is right here, this was a paper um, on uh, Marion, Kentucky bluegrass. And here is the, the one pound of iron up here in the top. Well, oh, I changed the color of that. Sorry. I was doing something earlier today. Here is the one pound of iron that he's talking about. These three, these lines down here are with no nitrogen. And these lines up here are with nitrogen. And so his claim is, is that you're going to suck up the, the iron with the nitrogen application and get it double dark green. But the evidence doesn't support that. And this is clear right here. Whenever we apply nitrogen with the iron, the actual influence of iron is disguised. It's masked. You don't get it double dark green. You get it green from the iron when no nitrogen is applied. When the, when the plant is not as green, that's when you see the impact of the influence of applying iron. Not when you're applying nitrogen. Okay. That's what this graph says with color. The same thing happens down here with, with density. You see that the density is actually, well, this isn't statistical, but it's probably biological. The density is slightly reduced from the application of, of iron when nitrogen's applied. <laughs> it's, I think, I don't think that's statistical, but there is a, there is a, a biological reduction here for the first five or five or six weeks from applying iron of one pound per acre of chelated EDT, EDTA iron, granular EDTA, there's a little bit of a reduction in density when you apply it, when you apply it with nitrogen. When you apply it without nitrogen, you don't see that. So, you know, it's not. I mean, I know it might be something to easily think slip over, but it's not. I really don't think it is. I don't want you to think that way. I don't. I don't want you to think ah, he's he's just spouting whatever he wants to spout. It's it's not true. There's very little evidence to support it, and it's important that we confront this and cut this off before it grows into a bigger cancer. Okay. Um, we're going to, he's also on this, on this, the, let's go back to the, the video on this label, on the, um, label that he showed, let me back it up just a little bit so you can see the label on this label, you see zinc and manganese and iron. Okay. This zinc here is also completely useless. There's, there's <clears throat> no real value to applying zinc to turf grass. There's very little value to applying manganese, but it can, can be beneficial in some cases. Um, but here he has zinc. Let's see what happened on the on yesterday's paper when zinc was applied. So we go back here when zinc was applied. Let's go down to the bottom. I'll just say real quick. Zinc and the conclusions did not affect color of grass or density of sod. Nothing. Okay. The effects of zinc are over here on this left side. The five and 25 pounds of treatment of zinc had no effect on the growth rate, color or sod density of American Kentucky bluegrass root growth was stimulated by five pounds. The rhizome growth was strongly inhibited by 25 pounds. So the only thing that really had an influence on the rhizome growth on this particular study was excessive amounts of iron caused a toxicity and excessive amounts of zinc resulted in a toxicity. So it's wasteful. It's not resulting in any benefit to you, that zinc and that fertilizer. Okay. It's not helping. So you're applying a fertilizer that has nitrogen and some of these other micros in it without possibly, I don't know, I'm assuming without necessarily knowing that there could be a negative consequence to applying these other heavy metals like zinc and iron and boron and all these other things. Okay. There can be a negative co um, consequence to applying those, those fertilizers that contain all this other stuff. Okay. One, the chances of seeing a beneficial response is very, very low, extremely low. And I would argue that there is probably an equal or greater likelihood that you're going to see a negative consequence from applying some of these things like zinc and boron and, you know, high levels of iron and so forth. But clearly the claim that 
you're going to apply this with nitrogen and it's going to be double dark is not supported by that paper. Yardmaster sells that 45 pound bag for $75. Jeremy Bosch says that that's $75. <laughs> Holy cow. $75. Oh my goodness. I didn't know that. Let's just assume it's 50 pounds. That's $3,000 a ton. You can buy 100% polymer coated urea for less than that. That can't be right. $75. Is that right, guys? Jeremy Bosch says $75 a bag on 40, for a 45 pound bag. Is that right? Am I doing the math right? My goodness. Well, keep watching this channel because you're gonna learn real you're gonna learn real quick you don't need to spend that much money on so you can you can we're gonna get into nitrogen sources we're gonna get into the cost of nitrogen sources and the longevity and the turf response to nitrogen sources all that stuff real soon and you don't need to spend 75 dollars a bag to to have a an acceptable turf grass there's that's that's crazy